Hello and welcome to the Literary Gladiators channel. My name is Larry. Thank you for tuning in to this video. Uh, every Monday this month I am uploading a video about a Flannery O'Connor story. And last week I talked about The Barber, which is, the more I think about it, the more I love that story. I really think it might be my favorite Flannery O'Connor story right now. There's so much to say about it. The more I think about it, the more I come up with to say. So. I, you know, I gave a 15 minute talk about it last Monday. Please go and look at that if you are interested and check it out. But you know, like I said, there's so much to say. I could say, I could probably go on for another 15 minutes talking about that story. Uh, this week, I'm talking about the geranium, which also deals with uh, Southern attitudes toward race in the 1950s and 60s. Roughly speaking, this story was first published in 1946 and was like the barber, it was a included with uh, in Flannery O'Connor's master thesis with uh, four other works besides those two. And uh, this story has been revised several times since then. Uh, I will be talking only about the original version right now because I have not read the other versions. I did not want to taint my mind with, uh, with, with different versions of this story. I just wanted to talk about uh, this, the geranium as it appears. And it is a strong story. It's not as strong as some of the others, but I did enjoy it. So um, it is a story about race and a story about grace, uh, as most Flannery O'Connor works are. Um, there's a woman named Dr. Jessica Houghton Wilson, who is a bit of an authority on Flannery O'Connor. And I will include an interview that she gave a few years back uh, about Flannery O'Connor. And she kind of provides a great hermeneutic for for what uh, a lot of Flannery O'Connor stories are and how they are to be interpreted. In my opinion, I, I, I happen to agree with her very strongly. And she has a way of uh, putting things that really clarify, you know, what, um, what these stories are trying to say, a lot of them. And, you know, if you look at the Bible, right, we, we find a lot of verses about how Christ will come to us like a thief in the night. So we have to be ever vigilant and ever ready. And how God speaks with a still small voice that kind of that theme um, comes up a lot in these stories, and uh, the idea that uh, that that grace avails itself to us in unexpected ways at an, an unexpected times, and it is up to us to receive that grace and to cooperate with it or to reject it, and um, we see that coming up again and again in in Flannery O'Connor's work. In this story, there's no exception to that. It's a story about an old man named Dudley, whose daughter uh, lives in New York City. He's from a rural country town down south, and she wants him to come and live with her uh, because she feels a sense of duty that um, she doesn't want him to die without any of his children around. So she goes down and asks him if she, he would like to do that, and in what he describes as a as a strange moment of uh, of curiosity and weakness, he, he agrees to go with her. And now that he's there, it seems that he really regrets the decision because of the fact that he feels very isolated and alone. And the city is uh, kind of overwhelming to him. He talks about, you know, the one time that he took a trip on the subway, you know, just going to the store with his daughter and how he's unable to really navigate the city. He's, he's overwhelmed by it. The subway is frightening to him. The, 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 L, the L train is frightening to him. And, you know, there's this huge culture shock. And one of uh, the few pleasures that he has in New York, in fact, probably the only pleasure that he has is reclining in this chair and looking across an alleyway where they have a geranium and they set it out every day on the window ledge. And he, he gets to look at this geranium and it reminds him of home. And it reminds him of, of his friends back home who happened to be, you know, black. Now he is uh, an old Southerner and is therefore very um, racist about it. So what happens in the story is that a uh, black man moves in next door to his daughter. And this man is, at first he assumes that this must be a servant that they hired, who's going to be coming by a few days a week to to clean the house. But his daughter explains to him, no, you know, if, if he was there, nobody in this neighborhood can afford servants. So if there was a black man next door, he's probably renting the place for himself. 
And the old man is shocked by this and thinks that it is ridiculous that a black man would see fit to live next door to white people. So he wants nothing to do with this guy because of that. Now it is this pride that this old man feels that prevents him from possibly making the only friend in this area that would be interested in, in being friends with him. Uh, so we see that his daughter only talks to him basically because she feels sorry for him. Uh, and But really they have nothing to say to each other. He talks about how careful he has to be to make sure that he doesn't say anything that he said to her before because she will just get up and walk away and not listen to him and how very little there is like she'll she'll try to start conversations with him but then you know give up real fast and, and walk away his son-in-law is on the road all the time he's a truck driver and he Dudley thinks he's a strange man and doesn't really talk to him and then uh, they have a son who's 16 years old and Dudley says he can't be talked to so Dudley is really isolated he's all alone and uh, in this in in this story, what happens is his daughter asks him to go downstairs to the neighbors to ask to borrow a pattern. So Dudley goes down the stairs, and when he on his way down the stairs, he he sees that there's a woman coming up, and he's kind of excited that he's going to possibly get an opportunity to just to have a word with somebody. And as they pass each other on the stairs, on the stairs, she doesn't say anything to him. She's looking at him coldly, and then he gets to the apartment where, you know, they, they keep this pattern that he wants, that his daughter wants. And, and the woman is kind of rude to him. And the, she sends the boy to get the, uh, the pattern. He comes back with it, gives it to him, doesn't say anything. So, you know, now he starts to reminisce about what life was like back home and how he and his black friend used to go and hunting a lot or you know they'd go fishing and hunting and all this great stuff and you know and he's got all these fond memories of uh of that and he's also remembers how uh his friend back home was always very curious about guns and how he would marvel at the fact that Dudley was able to put the guns back together after he took them apart to clean them and all this and was always interested in hearing about guns but he starts to daydream as he's walking up the stairs back to his daughter's place about how there was this one time that he and his friend went hunting and he starts to reenact it, you know, visibly where he's uh, pretending to hold a gun and, uh, and aim it and shoot it. And as he's doing this, uh, his black neighbor sees him and uh, Dudley hears his footsteps and it startles him and he falls on the ground and the black man is trying to keep from laughing this his neighbor so he comes up and offers to help Dudley up Dudley uh, doesn't know what to do doesn't do anything so the movement so the man grabs him by the uh, by the wrist and kind of pulls him up and, and says come on I'm going up that way anyway I'll, I'll, uh, I'll walk you home so he's kind of like just got him by the arm and he's bringing him up the stairs and, and he's making conversation and it turns out that this black man is interested in guns and he's interested in hunting and he's got shared interests that uh that Dudley has as well but Dudley is so embarrassed by the fact that this black man uh sees himself as an equal and he's so his, his pride is so injured by this that he becomes completely uh paralyzed can't say anything and this opportunity to actually make a friend and to end that isolation that he feels kind of goes to waste because Dudley was not ready to hear that small voice of God, you know, telling him that, uh, that we're all equal before God and just, he can't do it. He just is, he's incapable of, of, uh, of cooperating with that grace. So the story ends, um, with him looking out for that geranium to be put out. And it turns out that it had fallen and it's uprooted. And just as, uh, as we see, uh, Dudley's life has been uprooted. Uh, so as that geranium is crashed on the floor and the man who lives across the street is looking at him as he's crying. Dudley's crying in the, uh, in his chair about everything that's happened to him. And, um, he says, you know, Dudley just says to him, Hey, 
where's the geranium? The man says, it's down there on the, on the ground. Dudley looks, sees the geranium, and uh, he said, why don't you go get it? And the, the, the man across the alley says, why don't you go get it? So he goes to the door, opens the door to try to go downstairs and get it. And uh, he's so paralyzed by, uh, by the humiliation. You know, his pride is so injured by, what, by the experience that he had with his neighbor that he just he can't even bring himself to leave the apartment. So it's a very sad story, but, um, but it, you know, it goes to show you how we have to be very vigilant and, uh, and open to these opportunities of grace that come along because you never know when it might be the last and you never know what the consequences are going to be for our refusal and our rejection of those moments. So really powerful story. Uh, it's not, it's not my favorite. It's pretty straightforward. You know, a lot of Flannery O'Connor stories, uh, you know, are a little bit, you know, where the, where the meaning is a little bit, um, obscured, you know, by deliberately, you know, so that we really get a full effect of, of how these opportunities come when we're not ready. And that even the, while reading it, you might miss it yourself because you're not, because of the lack of preparation that you might have in your own heart or for, you know, whatever reason. So, um, I would recommend it though. It's a good story. As I said, she has revised it several times. I think the last time that she did, uh, the story is called Judgment Day. And that might be one that I read in the future. But um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to talk about that story. It was a good story. Next week, I'm going to be talking about Revelation, which is, I think, the last story that she ever wrote. Um, and it's a really good one. So please do tune in next Monday and you'll get to see that. And thank you for watching this video. Please like it if you like it. And um, please subscribe to this channel if you are interested in literature. We have the Gladiators are, are always uploading new videos. I upload videos on Monday, but everybody's always got new content on this channel. So please do uh, subscribe and I'll be seeing you next Monday. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.